What's going on, guys and gals? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from the inside of my office. Hopefully, you can hear me just fine. Doing a sound check real quick. And yeah, um, probably 20 or 30 minutes, I want to get on here and show you guys what I found in three hours. I thought it was a really stellar haul. So I did two hours of thrifting yesterday, all right? I did one hour today, maybe even 30 minutes today. Um, I was in the first thrift store today, only one thrift store, actually. Uh, I went to a garage sale as well. So we call that kind of thrifting. But uh, I arrived at that garage sale around 8.45. I was done with the thrifting around 9.30 or so. 45 minutes thrifting today two hours thrifting yesterday. I'm going to show you exactly what I found. You guys are going to be like, what? It doesn't it doesn't make a bit of sense. Like this stuff is super awesome. Probably creeping close to maybe a thousand bucks or something in pure profit once I'm done. Um, if you guys want to follow my journey, definitely subscribe to this channel. And this is definitely part of my Road to 200 series where I try to, you know, I'm trying to create or get to 200 super quality listings on my eBay store with a 20 or 30% monthly sell through rate with items that yield me 50 or more in pure profit. So that's what I'm looking at. If everything goes right, should be able to get about two to three grand in my pocket, pure profit every single month um, from doing this. And that's, ex that's basically the quest of 2018. So anyways, I wanna, uh, you know, welcome to you to my channel. And for anybody that is watching this right now and lucky enough to watch this and it's live, you can put a comment and I can see it. Okay, so we're gonna get right to the very first item in no real particular order. Well, particular order, because I'm gonna show you what I found yesterday first, and then I'm gonna proceed into what I found today. And today's part is definitely better than yesterday's, but see, yesterday's was really good too. You know, I'm, I'm really working hard on only picking up things that are completely worth my time. So, all right, so the very first thing here, you know, when you find anything that's sealed in a thrift store, you're gonna have to start thinking a couple things. Um, but basically, yeah, it's new, and two, you're gonna probably have to scan it, okay? Now, if you're a complete beginner and you're like, what the hell does he mean by that? If you get on the eBay app, there's a scanning function up in the search bar, and you can search by barcode or scan by image or something like that, or scan by barcode or search by image. Anyways, um, and if you have an Amazon seller account, you can also get the Amazon seller app and you can scan things with that. So um, I would love to say that this is gonna go to eBay and it can't, okay? It could go to eBay, probably sell for like 50 bucks, but on Amazon, uh, this thing's selling for around 65, 70. So where is in, where in the USA is Carmen San Diego, which if you don't know what the hell this is, then you're probably thinking like, or if you, you kind of remember kind of what this is, you're like, oh, isn't that like in the 2000s or late 90s, Carmen San Diego, San Diego was a big deal. And yes, it was. So this right here is actually, oh, I was completely wrong. It's actually mid 90s, 1993. So it's actually still sealed. It's an awesome condition, six bucks, um, I believe they're selling for like 70 75 on fba which is amazon and from there uh, i should get about a 60 dollar check cut after all the fees so that's pretty good um can't remember the rank right now but it was good enough for me to get into it um while that doesn't belong on ebay it could go to ebay and i could sell it for cheaper but uh, just kind of showing you the caliber of items i'm picking up um at thrift stores i just can't pass that one up to show you guys i really wanted to show it to you so um at that same thrift store you know i like looking at the whoa i like looking at the mail section of uh you know thrift stores a lot obviously like outerwear and uh, certain kind of pants and jeans but um when i go into the women's part i'm looking for really cool boots uh, i just sold a pair of sorrels yesterday that i spent like 14 dollars on sold them for like 100 plus yesterday um and so i go into the women's section looking for particular things and when i was in the women's section yesterday at a thrift store i found this now, I know about this brand because um, when you go to enough outdoor stores, and if you're an outdoorsy kind of individual, you'll find yourself in outdoor stores. Much like if you are a crafty individual, you might find yourself into a Hancock Fabrics or something like that. But, you know, I do love the outdoors, and so I know a lot about random random things from camping to some hunting things uh trekking mountaineering hiking like all that kind of stuff like i know a fair amount about it but i know a lot about the brands because i've you know visually seen these things repeatedly at stores so if you're um hustling kind of like one-off but high grade kind of things uh, this brand right here is pretty interesting right steel so it's pretty interesting. Steel is a made in Wyoming brand and they make very high quality garments. I mean, up there with North Face, Patagonia. And so this is a Steel uh, women's poncho, pretty interesting with tags, which is one of the main reasons I'm, I got into it. I got into this one for about uh, 15 or $16. I'm uh, gonna be getting, I'm gonna be asking somewhere in the vicinity of 100 to 150 for this thing right here. So it's a Steel women's fleece, no comps, which could be a really good thing, but plenty of steel things have sold, plenty. So um, 
yeah, steel is definitely one of those brands and the majority of those items that have sold are literally in the 80 plus range. So I started thinking a couple, you know, the gears start turning in my head, like new with tags and the ones that were selling for like 80 plus are all like used garments. So in my head, I'm like, yeah, used, yeah, I mean, I mean, brand new steel, like something that's like one of a kind, plus the price tag says MSRP, like $179, $179 which typically um, when you go to outdoor stores, if it's uh, in season, there's usually like never a markdown on these kind of things. So like that, but that price tag that you see, uh, you know, is the price that you would pay. Um, so usually they mark down stuff like this in the summertime. So it's still kind of cold in America in a lot of places. So I I would assume that this thing would go somewhere within between a week and a month, something like that. So I'm going to be shooting for that 100 to 150 mark. Good to see you guys. Uh, I want to shout out a couple of people that have joined the chat. Uh, what's up, Raken? What's up, Thriller Gorilla Pickett? What's up, Carl, Jonathan, Eric, Ryan Graper, Red Neckerson's Resales, and Axel Rosa. So, hey, what's going on, guys? Good to see you. If you're wondering, like, hey, dude, you don't have a, you don't have a shirt on today. You have, like, a tank top. I don't know. For some reason, my house is just warm today. Even though outside in Austin, Texas, it's, like, 48 degrees or something. Um, I, I did just come back from a bike ride, so that probably has something to do with it. But I, I was literally, like, in, in a shirt and, uh, you know, uh, a hoodie, and I just was – like nearly panting, right? I could not take it. So anyways, that's the reason why I look a little bit different today. Okay. I'm going to show you something else that I found. Um, you're going to guess what the outcome of this one real quick. Pretty. I mean, if, for anybody that knows me and knows my situation, you'll understand what the outcome is. So I bought this right here. This is a flannel. All right. This is a flannel. Clearly it's a flannel. It's an awesome color. Okay. Really, really good color. And um, it's a women's organic cotton flannel made by Patagonia. So people call Patagonia like Patagucci, uh, but Patagonia is really good stuff. Okay. So um, one of the things that people probably don't know about me and who I ride with, usually my brother, um, his girlfriend or my wife, when we ride mountain bikes, I like riding in flannels. Like it's not super common to see people riding in flannels, but I love it. For some reason, it's just something I like to do. So I have a pretty decent flannel arsenal now that I ride in. And when... Uh, and you can kind of guess the outcome of this. I bought this thing for like 13 bucks or 14 bucks, hoping to sell it for around 50 to 70. And while you might be thinking that totally breaks your rules, right? Didn't you say in the beginning of this broadcast that you, uh, you know, wanted to only get into items that yield you $50 or more in pure profit? And the answer is yes. Um, I was buying this for two reasons, right? So one was, okay, I bend my rules a little bit. Maybe I make like 30 bucks, not a big deal. But the other reason, take a guess what the other reason was, okay? So go ahead and guess that real quick, and I'm gonna show you the next item. Um, let me make sure I get this in, yeah, this one right here. Okay, so this was still part of yesterday's haul. So you can guess what happens to this thing, right? And, uh, <laughs> all right, and then in the same Goodwill, I couldn't believe it. First thing I saw when I walked in, like just, oh man, it just stole my attention, right? And, uh, I couldn't believe they were in this condition. So here we go. This is what it is right here. Some La Sportiva. And yeah, by the way, that flannel that I just showed you is not a male size. It's a size six women. So now guess, now guess what happens to that flannel. Um, so yeah, La Sportiva. All right. So I was thinking it was a Wildcat or Wildcat GTX, which is a really good model to hustle. And it probably sells for around 50, uh, 40, sorry, 50, 60. But this actually was, it turned out to be a much better model, a little bit more raced out model. This one right here is called the Ultra Raptor. And Ultra Raptor is brand new or between 100 and 179.99, right? So that's pretty awesome. Um, so this one is probably going to be somewhere in that 80 to to $100 mark in resale. And they were probably been used like once or twice because I can tell, even though you see dirt on the bottom, right? These are nubs on nub shoes, meaning I can tell with the primary wear indicators that this shoe has not been written. I mean, walked in or trail run in literally like over one time. Like the, the initial indicators are still all there that this shoe is basically in super condition. So got into them. And plus you can see just the reflection of like when you go trail running and you do a lot of it, trail dust goes to the shoes. It's like a, you know, nylon mesh is like a magnet for trail dust. And on this shoe right here, there's still like the nice glossy finish on the actual, you know, plastic pieces right there on the upper, and there's no trail dust whatsoever, zero, not even kick up of mud or anything. So that's how, that's another reason why I can tell, like, this thing's in impeccable condition. All right, so Ultra Raptors, La Sportiva, an amazing brand, both in uh, hiking, trail hiking, uh, mountaineering. You're going to want to remember this brand because it's going to pay you big money, well, pretty good money. I wouldn't say big money, but pretty good money when you find it and you resell it.
All right, did the, the shoe test, everything was good. We looked for delamination, everything was good. I checked all the eyelets, everything was good. And one of the other ways you can tell is that a shoe's really like, hardly ever been used. And what a wear indicator that I just kind of look at, although it's not theoretically or technically a wear indicator, is just the inside sole. And the inside sole on almost every shoe is going to have the brand of the shoe, some saying, you know, um, this one says like La Sportiva, mountain running. Some say like born in the mountains. Some will say Hoka 1-1 something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But um, essentially inside there, you can see how pristine and crisp that logo inside is. It doesn't have any cracking or breaking or fade. So yeah, it's in perfect condition. Anyways, 80 to 100 on these is what I'm going to be asking for. thought it was a pretty solid pickup. Um, so here right here, yeah, the, the, one of the main reasons is why I bought this was to come home uh, with like a gift for my wife, wifey, you know, and uh, she's all good with wearing thrifted clothing. In fact, she kind of, I wouldn't say she prefers it, but she really enjoys it when she finds something thrifted and it's something super stellar. If you were to go to REI right now and try to buy this flannel, well, first of all, it doesn't exist anymore. This, this color doesn't exist, but um, you would end up paying. We were literally looking at a flannel like identical to this, except it was in the green colorway, and it was like seventy nine ninety nine for a flannel. So think about that for a second. So when someone tries to sell this for fifty or sixty bucks, it's completely reasonable at that point. They are made of organic cotton, so they are technically a little bit softer than most flannels, um, and they're built really well. So yeah, it's a solid, solid pickup right there. So yeah, and it is going to her. She put it on and she was like in love. She's like, oh my God, totally going to ride with this on my mountain bike. I'm going to wear it around town. And that's okay with me. A $14 gift to someone that you love is nothing, right? It's nothing compared to like the joy or the happiness that they get in that single moment when they see it. And, you know, you can't, you can't buy things like, oh, yes, you can. You can actually, you can buy moments like that. And I just did. But uh there really is no true price after the gift is given. Like, you know, it's just an immeasurable kind of thing. And so I urge people out there to always be thinking of their significant others or their siblings or parents or something. When you go out thrifting and you find something really super cool that you know that they would be totally into, give them first dibs on it, you know? All right. So this first, um, not this first, but this next find, I got this at a Savers, which is really close to the Goodwill. And um, yeah, anytime you see something like this, you should be thinking like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to check that out because it looks kind of like Villaware, right? And of course, it was Villaware. So this is stamped at Villaware right there. This is a Model 2000, which is a very common uh, two-PC or two-piece um, waffle maker. I mean, super simple, right? So if you're like, holy crap, like, what to teach me about this bona fide? Like, what do I do? So basically, if you see this and... Um, this is one of the more common ones you're going to find. The, the V2000 is like super common, like it's all over the place. And the sold market for the V2000 is pretty extensive. Um, this right here will probably yield somewhere between $60 and $80. Um, and I bought this one for $7.99. Um, and it's very easy to test. I mean, you literally just plug this thing into any part of the thrift store and you open it up and you stick your hand in there and then you close your hand in there while it warms up. Now you don't want to put it to like a level eight or anything when you're doing that. So, you know, maybe level two or three, stick your hand in there and just feel, is it getting hot or not at level two or three? It's not going to singe you completely, um, but you can definitely progressively feel it getting hotter. And there will be a point where your hand will definitely want to come out, but uh, you're never going to want to put this thing at like level six to eight or something like that. Then stick your hand in there. Cause it's going to boost. It's going to go to like the maximum setting as fast as it can go. And so anyways, check that out. Um, if you find that some of these have uh, extensive amounts of grease in here, um, I sometimes pass on those because I just don't want to clean them that much. Um, but on top here, this thing was covered with like filth. I don't know, just like random filth from the kitchen filth, you know? And it was just sitting in every little crevice up here. And all the pictures that I'd seen on eBay as comps were just like pristine looking, like perfect looking. And I was like, you know what? For me to compete in that market, I've got to make sure that this thing looks the exact same way as those, uh, if not better. So I got actually goo gone. Um, on a rag and I just quickly and it took all that funk and kitchen gunk completely off and this was the finished product so imagine this thing you know you couldn't even see a reflection in it and it just had filth on it but one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, you know you sometimes you have to put a little bit of cleaning into these villa wares. so I spent two minutes and it looks like this it's perfect you know, goo gone of all things. Now you're not going to want to put the goo gone inside here because that's going to give a really nasty taste to when they build the waffles and everything. So, but you're going to want to do it on the outside. Don't ever do that. That stuff on the inside ever. Um, so on the inside, I don't really know what to suggest to you guys. Uh, maybe it's like apple cider vinegar or 
some sort of vinegar, maybe that cleans it. I don't know. I think these things are detachable too. Like these things might come out on some of the models, like the bigger models, like these actual iron things come out, but I'm not 100% sure. And I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about regarding the inside. So anyways, <laughs> good to see you guys. Um, yeah, Eric says the shoes look like they're in, in uh, amazing condition. Yeah, totally amazing condition, but that's not even, okay. So now we're going to go into today's thrift haul and you're going to be like, what? Like, doesn't make any sense. Like, this is how I really believe that this is going to be a thousand dollars in about, okay. So I did three hours of thrifting. Um, I have done zero real evaluation because everything's like perfect. It's, it's where it needs to be. I'll do some spot cleaning on this next item. I want to show you. Um, but I really do think this is about a thousand dollar haul, like pure profit, about a thousand bucks. And you'll see why. Cause I know you've seen a couple of things. You'd be like, okay, that's not even close to a thousand yet. So surprise us bona fide. Well, you're about to be surprised. All right. So after the gym this morning, I got out of the gym at eight o'clock. First thing I did was like whip out yard sale treasure map. And it's an app where it shows you with a pin drop kind of thing where, where garage sales are in your immediate area or, you know, within 20 miles, 30 miles. So I looked at that, didn't find much going on, but there was one, there was one sale that was about 15 or 20 minutes away. I'm like, you know what? forget it. It's Friday. Had a great workout, smashed an awesome workout. I was like, I'm just going to go check it out. It was just a beautiful day to even just drive. Like it was just nice. So <clears throat> I drove and um, in the part of town that it was in is also a cool part of town where there's some like neat little bars that are sprouting up and it's a very, it's getting gentrified. So there's a lot of like exciting stuff going on there. And it's, it's neat to drive through that part every now and then to see, you know, what other neat restaurants or bars have popped up. And so those always lead to me going there with my wife later on and checking them out. So I don't ever try to make something like a chore, right? When I'm trying to find something And this one garage sale was just a pin drop, right? I, I go into it, you know, you can highlight the pin drop on yard sale treasure map and you can take a look at what's going to be at the garage sale. And if people have put pictures to the post, you get to see those pictures and rifle through them real quick. Um, I saw a couple things, you know, women's clothing, outdoors uh, gear. Oh, what did I see? Women's clothing, um, speakers. Like, I'm like, all right, you know. Um, and there was something else that triggered me. I forgot what it was, but I saw a couple triggers. And for a trigger, um, I was like, yeah, I'll go, I'll invest the 15 or 20 minutes to get down there and check it out. And this is what I bought from there for 10 bucks. And Larry's Dusty Attic just paid me a super chat of five bucks, which to me is bona fide beer money. So thanks so much. I'm certainly going to grab an adult Bev this weekend because of you, Larry. So thanks a lot. I really do appreciate that. Um, I don't want, you know, I don't want people to think like, oh, so he's going to get drunk and he's going to drive around and stuff, which no, like chill with friends probably over the span of like three or four hours might have two beers, like nothing crazy. Um, but still an incredible gesture. Uh, I, I really feel honored when people just buy like some of my merch behind the scenes or they join the green room, they come to a meetup or super chat. Like it's just support. And it's like, some of the highest levels of support, you know? So um, it, it's very rare that a YouTuber with without years of experience making videos gets super chats. So it's usually like people that are like known or they give good content. It really makes me want to do more for you guys. So thank you so much. All right, so this is what I found at the garage sale. Um, decided to swing at it, right? Decided to swing at it. I asked the lady like, hey, does this work? And she was a really nice Austin lady. In fact, she was wearing an 850 fill uh, Eddie Bauer mountaineering jacket, which you can't even find. Like you can't find that on the Eddie Bauer site. I was like, where did you get that jacket? It was an 850 fill. If you know anything about down fill jackets, an 850 is good for temperatures around zero to 20 or so. All right. So zero to 20 camping tent, sleeping bag, whatever. But the jacket itself was rated to zero to 20 with a wind chill of like negative 40. And I noticed the jacket immediately, like it was so cool. It looked like something that was like way beyond Patagonia, way beyond, um, you know, North Face. And it said Eddie Bauer and it had these like two pickaxes that looked like skull and crossbones style. Where did you get that thing? She goes, um, I got it from like some of the people that ran this uh, Denali expedition team or Rainier expedition team in Washington. So it's actually like a kind of a harder to find garment. I was like totally blown away because it was really cool. And usually Eddie Bauer doesn't produce really neat garments like that. They produce run of the mill every day, you know, mass produced kind of junk. Um, and if you're lucky enough, <laughs> you might have an Eddie Bauer Explorer, you know, which was kind of cool back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. But for the most part, like, you know, there are other better places to get outdoor garments, right? So anyways, she had this. This was sitting in a paper bag wrapped up in uh, 
like cardboard kind of stuff taped together. I unpack the tape enough to know to see this part. Okay, so I unpack the tape enough to see this. And originally, I was thinking like, oh, it's a computer desktop subwoofer, you know, or it sits on your floor where the I was like, maybe it's made by Alltech Lansing, or perhaps it's made by uh, I don't know Alienware or something like that. But uh, anytime that you see fins like this, okay, so this is basically heat sinks or cooling fins right here. Um, and this typically means that there's a power unit in there that's going to power the big speaker that you see on the side right here, which is a 10 inch woofer. And once I saw this part, I was like, all right, so it's probably not mass produced like gaming type stuff because typically you don't see cooling or heat sinks like this. I guess that's what they're calling cooling fins or heat sinks. I think that's what they call them. And, uh, I looked back here. And I immediately was like, whoa, this is actually car audio because I just noticed this stuff and I just know it from back in the day when it says ground and remote and battery terminal. Like, I just know those things. So it's just something that I know. Um, and uh, these two things right here or these buttons or these things right here end up going to your head unit. There's a fuse. So I know this is 100% car audio related. And I kept looking at it more and I was like, it looks like it's in great condition. You know, it's a 10 inch infinity woofer both sides none of the woofer looks cracked through the screen none of the screens are dented not that i can really tell and i was like you know what for 10 bucks i'll do it she's like 10 bucks i was like hmm and i wanted to lowball her and all that kind of stuff but honestly she was so nice and she was like really inviting and i was the only weirdo that like showed up really right to her garage sale so i was like you know what like i'll just pay the 10 bucks like not a big deal let me shout out someone else real quick oc clanton just bona fide beer money to me some Oh man, five bucks. So thank you so much. That might be tomorrow's dopio because if I get too many $5 things, on, I cannot bona fide beer money that tonight. So um, maybe you'll be tomorrow's beer money. Um, but yeah, for sure, Larry's Dusty Attic is going to uh, be my today beer money. And then it looks like OC Clanton's going to be my tomorrow beer money. Um, and Larry's Dusty Attic said, I just want to pay, uh, I want to you know do this because you are so nice to your wife. Hey man, you, you, you know, most people are going to tie happiness to riches and all this kind of stuff but i'm gonna tell you right now the richest people in the world are people that don't necessarily have money right they have things to look forward to they've been to amazing places they've had amazing experiences experienced the most amazing flow states in the world none of these things you're going to get with money um you're only going to get it with getting off your ass and like getting out there being vulnerable loving people loving someone else and getting out there and using your body to do what it can do, you know, in the wild. And that's how you can, those are the richest people to me, right? That's, that's true rich right there. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of a weirdo, a weirdo like that. Maybe I think kind of weird, but I don't see any purpose of life. If all you do is run around trying to accumulate money all day, like that doesn't make any a bit of sense to me. So, um, Here's the infinity speaker right here. Definitely car audio related. You know, it's got a, the reason why those cooling fins or heat sinks are right there is that's because this is a powered subwoofer for a car or a truck. It's got nice little feet on it. Cool. Um, and the thing is, I can't test it. Well, maybe I could test it. I might figure out a way to test it. I just don't know how to. Well, I'll figure that out. But anyways, I'm still, these things are selling, you know, in um, pre-owned condition between 80 and 150 all day on eBay. So I was like, you know what? Definitely going to check it out. It doesn't doesn't exactly need a big box or anything. I can take these legs off and it's going to fit in a pretty decent box. So, you know, I'll be happy with 80 to 100 on this guy. Not a big deal. FedEx Smart Post, of course, because it's probably going to, it does weigh a good amount. All right, let me put that down on the ground. Okay, so that was today. That was in the morning. That was at uh, 8.30 or something. After I was done talking to that lady about her cool jacket and random stuff, and she had a cool house in East Austin, which is the gentrified part of town. Um, you know, I probably got out of there around 9. I had an appointment to have my truck suspension looked at at like 10. I was thinking like, you know what? There's a Goodwill close to here. There's some pawn shops close to here. Let me make the best out of 30 minutes, see what happens, right? So I start spelunking around this Goodwill that is in a bad part of town. Okay, so now it's in a, there's a, gen, there's a gentrified neighborhood. And then there's like, I don't know, like there's a Goodwill on the outskirts of it, right? And I've known that Goodwill to be not that good, but I was close, so I go. And I could not have been more surprised, more incorrect, and thanking the cheddar gods above that I actually made a decision to go to this Goodwill as opposed to pawn shops that were around the area. Um, and mind you, one of those pawn shops, I know the owner, and like we're cool, like 
we've gotten coffee before we've ridden bikes downtown before like we're just cool like that and i could have seen that dude and i wanted to but i was just on the side of the two lane over a four lane road that the goodwill was on closer on my side than the pawn shop was on the other side so i was like i don't want to cross traffic just forget it i'm gonna go to the goodwill i could not be more incorrect about me thinking that the pawn shops were a better idea so i go to the goodwill and upon walking in the very first thing i see okay let me just be honest with you guys the very first thing i see is a stack, a stack, all right, of these things. New in a box. Now, there were 11 of them, okay? New in a box. They had price tags of a $10 a piece on each one. So they're new. Uh, four, four or five are definitely, definitely in a condition where I wouldn't be comfortable selling them in new condition on Amazon, okay? So that's just to be disclosed right now. Four out of the five are not in good condition. So, I immediately picked up um, six of them, put them in my cart. So I pick up six of these, I put them in my cart. They're $10 a piece. And I'm this is $10 out the door because I have a 10% off coupon. So the state tax, none of that matters anymore. It's out of the way. Um, and these are all sealed, which is good. And even though it's a tiny little piece of tape, it's all sealed because it's the same type of tape on each one. So that's how I kind of know. Um, but these are Nerf Vortex Praxis. And I scanned one. And one Praxis is yielding, I mean, I guess I could scan it right now. I know it's about 148K in toys. Let me just give you the right, this because this is what really jazzed up the day, and this is what got the day like, holy crap, like immediately in the green. I mean, everything was in the green already, but like, you know, like to where you start going, oh my God, is that really what's going on? So let me see if I can scan this one more time. Or maybe you guys can look at it for me, because some of these barcodes are covered up. Here's one that's not covered up. So I'll take a look um, right here. Um, all right. So the Nerf, the Nerf Praxis blaster right here is 148K in toys, four and a half out of five stars. Great. Oh, I'm into it. There's the actual listing. It's sitting right there. Well, you can barely see it on the camera, but there it is. Uh, one person selling at $79.99. Um, and I can sell a new condition. If you sell it at $79.99 and that, that one person just has one, for example, I'd be the next in line more than likely. Um, but that person, after the fees, because the fees are only 20 bucks, it yields you $59.58 after each one is sold. 148K in toys, though. So that probably sells one, maybe a month, something like that. You know, it's not a really super fast seller. So don't be thinking this is a fast seller. This is like a higher mid tier to maybe even arguably lower, lower long tier item. So I got into six of them for sure. I was like, yeah, I'm buying that like hundred percent. Like, why not? Um, I got into the last five. I started thinking like, damn, there's, they have some edge, edge, edge crush. You know, that's what the, the real term of it is called edge crush. And edge crush is okay when you deal with places like eBay. So here's an edge crush example right there. You know, like this, I don't want to send that to Amazon. Like, it's just not worth my account. You can see that. You just see it. Like that's just not, and here we go. Here, here's a really big dent on the top, but there's a perfectly new gun inside, right? So I was like, yeah, I'm not comfortable sending the Edge Crush into Amazon, but I was like, what about the Edge Crush? Edge Crush does okay on eBay. And so some of the ones with uh, that are selling on eBay and you can word it a certain way um, or you can put new other or whatever. And then an other part description you can put, you know, has some Edge Crush, right? And someone that's just looking to get the gun, they're not a collector, for example, would just be like, yeah, that's totally worth my 60 bucks or 70 bucks or something like that. And either way, I'll probably walk away with um, 35, 40 on each one of those. And I just thought about it. I was like, I can't pass it up. Like, it's just not something I want to pass up. It's just too good. And I bought them all actually. So I got them all. I think I spent 197 at this good, well, 139 out the door, something like that. It was something pretty decent. Like it was a good amount. Um, let me show you something else that I found that was cool. And then I'll show you like the final hurrah, like, the, oh my gosh, like super awesome. Um, so when I was in the men's section, I think there's someone, there's some people working on my house right now. So I think it's going to get crazy noisy in about two seconds. So I'm gonna try to hurry up. Um, I found these right here. These are, uh, Cole Han. Anytime that you see something like this, right? Sketchers have, have ripped this off pretty good, but, uh, still usually when you see this, you should be thinking Nike air merging with Cole Han. And so these are not lunar grand, right? Which would be good, but these are actually called zero grand, zero grand suede wingtip. Um, yeah, these are really, really actually kind of hard to find, but these are called the zero grand and there's some other name on here, but who cares? Uh, they're in decent condition, decent condition. I'm going to try, I'm going to try hard to get 80 to hundred for these. These were out the door, uh, about 13 or 14 bucks, something like that. 
And so that was definitely a pickup, definitely a score, All right? Definitely looked them over for a ton of wear and tear, but there was not that much on this. So I decided to get into them. All right, the final, final thing, final thing. This was it, man, because I've actually sold not this pair, but a kind of similar rare kind of foot joy shoe. I sold it for like $279.99. I was into it for like 13 bucks. That happened maybe in October last year, November. Um, found it at a Savers. It was a mint condition. All right, so this one right here, not in mint condition, but right around the same kind of play. We have these foot joys that are just killer looking. I mean, that it couldn't be more killer than this. And so got into it. Um, I paid 16 out the door for these things. There's one of these little dirt spikes missing. Not a huge deal. No one really cares about that. I'll just close it. Everything is in perfect condition. So the last, some of these that are selling, these are things you're selling anywhere between one, uh, well, I would say comfortably 160 to about 350. Like not even kidding you. I know it's a big spread. So depending on how well these kind of clean up and they're in really good condition, um, I don't know. You know, you got to find the right person that wants to wear something loud like that. So, you know, could be a little mid tail, long tail, but this is essentially going to yield easily, easily over a hundred dollars. This shoe right here, it could even maybe yield 200. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you can kind of see that with all the Nerf guns sold with this thing sold, you know, with those zero grands eventually sold and the Carmen San Diego game sold and the Steel women's poncho sold and the Villa wear sold and the other things sold, the, La Sportiva and that freaking uh, speaker, right? It's just three out, two, technically two, two hours, 45 minutes of thrifting, okay? So if people are out there going, man, like I thrift all day and I don't find anything like that, you know, it's just about being smart. It's about just doing targeted hits and hot shots and keeping your energy high. And that's what I did. When I popped into that Goodwill at nine today, like within five minutes, I was thinking, holy crap, I need to come back to this Goodwill and really evaluate it out because there was a part of me that was like, dude, I cannot miss my appointment and look, have my truck looked at for the suspension stuff. But I wanted to like not show up because there was just so much opportunity in this goodwill. And I just felt as if I had to rush. So, you know, I still spent 30 minutes in there. I didn't feel like I found everything. I didn't. So um, I thought this was killer. I cannot wait to sell these guys, honestly. So anyways, Rake and Profit says, smash that like button. Yeah, smash the like button for some good stuff. Two hours and 45 minutes. That's what I found. Um, I, I really do think low end. We're looking at low, I mean, the lowest of the lowest of the lowest low end, probably like 900 bucks. Highest of the highest of the highest high end, like 1200. Something like that is going on in my head. And that's after shipping and fees and all that stuff. So I think it's a pretty decent haul. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brandon English says, nice finds. We have... Uh, CT Whale says, you tell him Rakin. And Rakin's saying, smash the like button. Um, I'm not one really to super boast about something, but I really felt as if like this was a really cool haul. And to be more inspirational and tell you guys like, look, you can, you know, if you just keep at it. Like there's so much of me that after the gym, I, I contemplated as much as I wanted to go drive my truck around and everything like that. I kind of wanted to just go to a coffee shop and do work, right? But I was like, you know, this could pay off if I just do an hour of this real quick. And so that's what I did, uh, 45 minutes actually. So anyways, and then yesterday's uh, run at thrift stores was only three stores. So four, I think it was three. I believe it was three. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it was three stores only. So that's where I found the poncho, the Villa wear, the Las Sportiva shoes, the Carmen San Diego game, and some, some other random thing. Oh, and the flannel. So you know, hot shots. Like I'm all, I'm a big proponent on hot shots. Um, now, if you're in the Austin area, very soon, um, just pay attention to my channel, but very soon there is going to be a reseller meetup. I'm, thinking, I'm going to try to do one on a Sunday. I'm going to try to do one during the week as well. So if your schedule conflicts with the week one, or maybe some, no one can look after your kids or something like that, but you still want to thrift, then know that there's going to be a Sunday one as well. So I'm thinking the Sunday one, maybe the last part of February, the last weekend. And then the one that is more anybody can join it. It's probably going to be around a Tuesday or something. All right. So anyways, Jason H says, when's the next garage sale video I do tomorrow? I am stoked to go garage selling. There's a 20% chance of rain, uh, arguably maybe 30%. That could ruin a lot of things. Upon me checking out yard sale treasure map this morning when I was in the gym, um, I, I filtered down to Saturday. You guys really have to get this app. If you're not down with uh, yard sale treasure map, it's 
you know how much money this thing makes like not, not it makes it makes me and i think i have i have the pro version which is like two or four bucks for a lifetime like updates and everything it's just ridiculous like ridiculous like get the pro version get everything i think the pro version allows you to see other days besides friday and saturdays or maybe other days besides saturday and sunday something like that and sometimes like today and garage sale on friday um yeah and i just looked up saturday and my little blue dot is in here and i'm just going to show you what 20 miles this is what i have in, within 20 miles or so it's not too bad see it's not too bad that's worth going out for that's worth going out making sure that you got enough money on your hands and everything and um i'm going out for sure and i'm definitely going to film it so i can like you know edit it and show you guys and everything so definitely going out fun spend time with my brother um yeah anyways uh oc clan i'm in dc can you guys do a conference i'll I'm, i'll come i'm trying to figure the next level yeah oc clanton we're actually having a mini seminar in Austin, Texas on June the 7th, I want to say, if everything goes right, which I'll, I'll solidify that next week. Um, but June 7th is what I'm thinking is the seminar day. And then we're going to have what's called Meetup Week. And the Green Room Meetup Week, we're on our fifth installment of the Green Room Meetup. Um, so the first meetup was like, what, 20 people showed up. And like, you know, we've progressively gotten this meetup bigger and bigger. But this year, um, there's a secret thing going on. There's one secret thing that I have to lock down before I can even talk about it. But there's definitely a secret thing, which is probably going to go down around Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, there's definitely some thrifting, live thrifting. We're going to go around thrifting. Um, these are resellers all over the nation. We get together in Austin, Texas once a year. And um, we thrift and have fun and network and experience Austin. And the hotel that everyone's going to be staying at is in like the freaking super primo part of town, like up north. Um, and the seminar space is like literally you walk outside of your hotel room which is beautiful and it's like right it's within walking distance i mean literally like two minutes and you can be at the actual seminar space so that's coming down too um and then we have a final event at a huge ranch in uh georgetown texas so there's a lot going on it's gonna be awesome plus we have garage sale caravan on saturday where we literally like take 40 50 sometimes 60 people out to garage sales and we just caravan vehicles together and we do live garage sale and we just video it all and we just all hit garage sales all at once and it is quite the treat so that's coming down you're going to see me talking a lot about it in february like a ton and i think we're going to be opening up parts of that to the public so if you do want to be uh part of the green room that's where the most communication is being shown right now um but the public we're thinking we haven't decided whether the we're going to let the public in on the big events or the secret event and all that kind of stuff yet, because that's definitely, we want to give green room members the priority because some of these things have occupancy, li occupancy limits and we have to be very careful about that. So anyways, that's, what's going on. You know, if you guys are thinking like his whole life is thrifting and all that kind of stuff, it's not, this is what I do on a part-time basis. All right. On a part-time basis, I do hot shot runs and I go to thrift stores and I do hot shot Saturday mornings where I garage sale for three and a half hours and that's how I want to run this eBay Road to 200 project. Even though you saw some things that are going to Amazon, Road to 200, the concept of it, I want you guys to go out there and adopt it. And uh, I just realized it's really dim in this room. But I want you to go out there and adopt it and make it your own. If you've got a thousand item store, right, the Road to 200 concept basically means look at your business. Are you having fun in your business? Ask yourself some very important questions. I'm going to put this light on. Um, let's see if, it, if it's any better. Um, ask yourself these very important questions. Am I having fun in my business? Do I care about these items that I'm reselling? How is my seller through rate in the first place? Ask yourself these questions and be honest with yourself because there's nothing worse than thinking you're running something that's amazing that you've just been lying to yourself all these years. Like I'm not having fun. It's all eBay's fault. And you know, I'm not going to resell anymore. And it's not eBay's fault and it's not anyone else's fault, but, you're, but yourself. Maybe you're not pivoting. Maybe you're not looking at it in the right way. And the Road to 200 concept is essentially getting back to really the basics of a fun eBay business, right? So instead of me trying to build a store that's like 500 items big or 300 items big or whatever, I'm going for a store and I have 152 active items, I think, as of this morning. I'm going for a store that has 200 items with super fast sell-through rate. That, that's what I want, right? 20, 30 percent of course there's faster sell-through rates there's 50 and 70 and 80 percent but that's show me a store that does that like that deals with used goods like that's gonna be hard to find um but yeah essentially like i want to make sure that i am doing what's right for my my 
just me, right? And I have a feeling that I'm not the only one who wants to join in on this project. Like I know Eric's down to like do it with me. Um, and there are other people out there behind the scenes like hitting me up on Facebook. Like I really like your concept. I'm gonna do it too. Make more videos. Like I wanna treat my business like a fun money-making business. I'm sick of having crappy inventory, stale inventory. Um, I wanna hold out for the good stuff. Um, you know, they're following the journey too. So if you wanna follow the journey, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. And after this whole thing is done, right about 15 seconds before this video is over, there's gonna be a road to 200 playlist that's gonna pop up on the screen in a certain place, which I haven't figured out where. And uh, yeah. It's called like an annotation um, or end screen. So I'll make sure to put that. There's, I think, three videos on the Road to 200 playlist, maybe two right now. I'm going to keep building this playlist up. So when you guys are bored or like you're listing or something like that and you want to just come back to the basics and like really understand and like see videos that have cool finds in them, then the Road to 200 playlist is something you're going to want to put on play, you know, frequently here and there. All right. So uh, Thriller Gorilla Picker. Hey, Chris, do you sell every day? I do. I, I sell something every single day for the most part. Um, Like whether it's on FBA or something like there's, I consider now my Amazon kind of like my fun money um, because that's just stuff that I've worked on in the past and it's just trickle selling. I'm still gonna make a shipment. If I'm lucky, I'll make the shipment will go out today. Um, gonna get these guns out of here too, these uh, Nerf guns. Um, the Carmen San Diego game, some other things that I showed in the past two days on videos, that's gonna go out on an FBA shipment. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of like fun money. It's just extra stuff that rolls in. Um, the eBay money, I'm trying to treat it as like, if it, the reason why I want to do this is I want to get my fixed living costs. And that means everything like insurance, like anything that's recurring, Spotify, Netflix, like all these things, the payment for my house, um, everything, gas costs, food costs, everything. I want to, I know my number, right? And you should know your number too. Very important because once you know your number, it can be a goal. And that's what I did. I was like, you know what? I want to have my fixed costs covered by eBay and then some, and then maybe an extra like 500 or a thousand bucks just from eBay, just eBay, just the little eBay stream. That's what I want. And I feel as if, if I can get that accomplished, not only will it be hella fun, but I could work on bigger things after that. Like once I get that on cruise control, then I could work on maybe making the eBay store a little bit larger, same quality size items, maybe train someone, maybe, don't know. And then maybe make the next goal like an extra thousand bucks on my house payment every month, right? Outside of what I'm normally paying, like something like that. Um, if I had a perfect world, I'd try to close my house out in about, you know, one to two years, maybe three at max, right? I think there's exactly, exactly a hundred K ish left on my house, which is good. Uh, house is valued at a decent amount too. Um, but if I left Austin, if I sold the house now, yeah, I'd make good, really good money, but that's not the purpose of it. I live in Austin, Texas It's a good town to live in. It's an expensive town to live in, honestly. Um, and if I was to leave, to be back here where I am now would be like nearly impossible. Like I, I wouldn't be able to afford it. So I'm in a very interesting situation where I bought the house way back in 2004. Um, and the payment is like nothing. I mean, literally people in the neighborhood are paying twice what I pay. So that's a huge advantage right there. Um, but that was just something smart I did like way back in the day. I don't like to credit any of that to reselling for the most part. That was just me getting tired of living in apartments and just wanting my own place and so i did and i pulled the trigger on the sixth house that i looked at um i got kind of impatient but somehow it just panned out the way it did and uh yeah the neighborhood grew significantly and now it's worth a decent amount um but this this show is not about property or anything like that but it is about challenging yourself and putting goals together and uh you know putting something realistic to where now you're vested in the business and now you're willing to really work on the business and not work in the business. That's really important, okay? When you're working in the business, you might think you're having fun, but truthfully, that's your only income stream. That's not good. Like you need to diversify and in order to diversify, you need time. You need time to evaluate what's the next stream gonna be in your life. What, what, what can you do with the extra 20 hours? Because on this project that I'm working on, I really don't wanna exceed 16 hours a week on this project. That's good. Right. That just means like now I have a monetary goal I want to get to, but I also have an hourly goal I want to stay within. Right. So now you kind of understand why the hot shots are a big part of a puzzle, because if I thrifted all day long, I could smoke eight hours up of that 16 hours 
in one day if I just went all day long. And I might not find all the cool stuff in eight hours. I might not have the energy in eight hours, like to continue eight hours. Like, but if I go hot shots for two hours or 45 minutes, dude, I'm so pumped up. It's ridiculous. You know, that's all you think about for an hour or two. And so maybe I live in a very good town where I can merge things together like that. But, you know, I think anybody can kind of understand this concept and adapt it to your life and make it your own. That's the most important part of Road to 200 is to understand the concept and then start implementing it in your life with whatever size business that you have on eBay. Think about reducing the size and really having fun with a business. So anyways, that's it right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, plenty of comments. I wish I wish I could have gone into the comment section a lot more in this uh, video, but um, sometimes I just go on tangents and rants and um, you know, sometimes that's the way I view me helping you as much as I can. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If some of this resonated with you or hit you hit home in some way or inspired you to do something um, or even look further into your business, do me a favor, put a comment down below, hit the like button. If you, um, and I don't know how much longer I can keep this up, but if you just want to like send a message on Facebook, that's cool. I'm a, I try to reply within uh, a day, right? But uh, there've been a lot of messages coming through ever since I started Road to 200 thing. And uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know how much longer I can keep doing that, but um, I try, right? So it's good to see you guys. Happy Friday, and uh, I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler broadcast. And yes, I am garage selling tomorrow. And yes, I'm going to film it. And yes, it's going to be amazing. 100%. I already know it. So hope to see you guys out there in the field. You know, if you're in Austin, Texas, I'll be out tomorrow. Come say hi. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.